Good afternoon. See, I've got a new scarf on. Christmas has come early for me. Thank you. Uh, as usual, they're not colours I would have gone for, but the student thought that this was the right one for me, and who knows? Maybe it is. Thank you again. Um, this this afternoon, because it is afternoon for me, we're going to talk about uh, not stealing. This is a very interesting subject because most of us do steal all the time, but we don't call it stealing. We don't even notice that we're doing it. It becomes such a part of our nature. We think stealing is just taking something that is not ours when we know it is not ours or it's a major piece or whatever other rationalization we use. We don't call minor stealing stealing at all. Excuse me, I'll let you know. Stealing is when you don't pay your bills on time. That's a form of stealing because you have an agreement with a person that you have not met. So first off, you haven't told the truth because you had no intention of meeting that. It was just when it was convenient. And you have killed trust in the other person, so you've mucked up number one, thou shalt not kill. Because the person that you are not paying will say, well, I can't trust her. And then, well, of course, you've stolen. Because you have kept back something that was rightly belonging to another person. So from every point of view, it's stealing. And from the point of view of the Yamas, well, you've just, you have crossed over them all. You have killed trust and killed time because it's going to take you longer to pay the bill now. You haven't told the truth. You have stolen. You haven't respected the other person enough to pay them on time. And you've taken more than you need. So you have crossed over every yama just because you haven't paid a bill on time. And I would ask you, is that a good exchange? And you'll say to me, oh, well, they're only ideas. Um, yes, they are ideas, they are commitments. And there isn't the um, Yama Sheriff will not come get you, but there is an even bigger and better sheriff that's going to get you and that is karma karma is going to get you you think perhaps that karma only turns on for the big things no 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 karma is the cause and effect karma is the law of cause and effect don't have to be a buddhist to believe in it a lot of people believe in it who are not buddhists or yogis or anything like that at all but they know that if you do a bad thing you get a bad thing what they might know is if you think a bad thing you get a bad thing or if you say a bad thing you get a bad thing because negatives attract negatives wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a law if it was not consistent. Then other kinds of stealing. Stealing time. Um, I had a mother who always kept a small pair of scissors in her pocket because when she passed by somebody's house and a plant she liked was flopping over the fence or growing through the fence, she would just snip off a piece and take it. And her idea was that it was on the public side of the fence, therefore it was fair game. It might have been on the public side of the fence, but it was still the person's plant. And I'm sure they wouldn't have minded if you'd have knocked on the door and said, please can I have a snippet of that? 
An interesting thing happened a couple of years ago. I was uh, teaching uh, some senior students. We were doing a retreat at my place and the main subject of the retreat was yamas. And it was a lovely summer day and I've got a very prolific garden and there was berries and there was all kinds of fruit and uh, it was very productive at that time. We did, uh, we did the morning session and uh, then for lunch I said why don't you take your lunch and go and sit in the garden and they said oh what a lovely idea and everybody took their lunch and went and sat around the pond and everything I stayed inside to research the second you know sort of do some work on the second part of the afternoon and when the students came in a couple of them said oh love your garden the fruit is fantastic tastes gorgeous and I said, beg your pardon? And they said, oh yes, we had raspberries and we had strawberries and we had some of the apples. The apples were very nice and uh, celery was great and, you know, on and on. And I said, a and you asked for this? And they said, oh no, but there's plenty there. You know, we didn't take, uh, we, did, we left some for you. I said, well, that's, that's terrific. But I thought we'd just done a whole morning and we'd covered Thou shalt not kill, Satya and Astya. Thou shalt not steal. Stealing is when you take something you haven't asked for or I haven't given you. And they thought I was being a silly old woman. But I wondered to myself why I had invited them for a retreat, why they had come and why they thought they could just totally disregard everything that we'd been talking about as soon as the real world came into play. No. Yamas and karma and all those considerations are 24-7 things, 365 days a year for the whole of your life. If you don't believe them, don't come to a retreat with me. <laughs> Particularly don't come to a retreat with me. <laughs> I want people who want to know how, you know, please assist me to keep them, not, well, they're not real. Just for today, I will not take what is not mine. Just for today, I will think before I take. Because it's not just one yama that you're stepping across. Those girls will never, ever, ever, well, I wouldn't say that. It'll be a long time until I invite that group back to my place. And when I do, I make sure it's the winter and there's nothing to see or do or eat. I'll just have to sit down and do the yamas. So they will have missed out on a beautiful time of the year, at least. I will know that no matter what I talk about, they won't tell me the truth about what they're thinking and feeling. I'll have to watch their actions to discover that. Maybe they will have learned about stealing, but they will have to show me that they have. It won't be automatic now. I won't automatically assume that because the yogis and we're talking about the yamas that they are actually paying attention or even think it applies to them. Yeah, stealing, stealing is big things. Stealing opportunities, squirming out of agreements you've made. I was talking to someone this morning um, she doesn't like smoking and her husband hasn't smoked for years and years and years and he's in a bit of a, a bind at the moment so he's taken up smoking as if that's going to fix everything and I said do you, do you like that and she said no no it goes against an agreement we had about smoking and I said oh well so what are you going to do about it and she said oh I'll just wait for him to 
um, to change. And I said, well, maybe he's going to need some encouragement to change. And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'll give you this example. My late husband, when he was courting me, he smoked. And I said, I don't go out with guys who smoke, sorry. You know, apart from the fact I think it's shocking and horrible and not good for you, I just don't like it. I don't like the smell. It turns me totally off the person. And before you start dating me, you have to give it up or not date me. It's easy. I'm not going to be the kind of person who nag, 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 nags you. And I'm not going to live with something I don't like. So, yeah. Give up smoking or give me up. One of the two. Well, he must have thought I was reasonably valuable because he gave up smoking. So he courted me and it was rather wonderful. And uh, we got married and that was great until he went back to work after the honeymoon period. Went back to work. And one day he came home and he was, I, and I could tell he had been smoking. And I said, you've been smoking? And to his credit, he said, yes. I said, well, that's not part of our agreement. And he said, oh, but that doesn't really count now, does it? And I said, well, why wouldn't it count now? And he said, well, we're married now, you know. We, we put up with our partner's foibles. I said, well, you might put up with other partner's foibles in other marriages. I'm not asking you to put up with foibles in this marriage, and I certainly am not going to put up with smoking. He said, oh, what are you going to do about it then? And I said, oh, that's easy. I said, you've stolen something from me. You have broken my trust. You have not told the truth. You've stolen something wonderful because now I'm not going to kiss you while you're smoking. I can tell you that. Back off. Um, and that's how it is. And he said, oh, what are you going to do about it? I said, I'll show you what I'm going to do about it. You stole something from me, so I'm going to steal something from you. But I'm not going to hide where I steal it. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do it. You collect royal doll. I'm going to take a piece of your royal doll off you. And I'm going to go down the backyard with a hammer. And I'm going to smash it. And every time you smoke... I'm going to do that because you've stolen something from me. And it's harsh, I know, but I feel strongly about it. I told you it was a deal breaker and it still is. And he said, you wouldn't dare. I said, yes, I would. And I took a piece of his royal dot and went down the backyard and smashed it. And he didn't smoke anymore and our relationship gone got better and better you know it was really good and from then on we were really clear with each other about what was needed and wanted I had to change there's some things I needed to change and I changed them and in, in any marriage it's, it's an ongoing thing and the yamas help because the yamas say okay we have to live every day telling the truth I can't not tell you the truth I can't steal from you. I have to respect you. Not take any more from this relationship that I need. See how it applies? These are not just a set of rules that, you know, you can tack onto your fridge and think, oh, well, they're good, I'll learn them. You actually have to do them. And I know I'm a crotchety old lady, but I've always been a crotchety old lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really on My kids will tell you I'm not that crotchety. I'm odd, but I'm not crotchety. So really, really, really think about stealing. Stealing is not just walking out with a refrigerator that, that someone else is in your car. 
They're the big things. It's the little things that you do every day. Stealing stuff from the stationery cupboard. Picking up an apple in Coles. Tempting though it is. All of those kind of things. They're stealing, stealing, stealing and they're not good. You know, uh, I maintain a, well, help to maintain a food bank at the United Church. And what I'm noticing is the opposite of stealing. Whereas I, I can't give stuff away to people, that, particularly older people, freely. I say, here you are, here's a box of, it's a free supermarket, here's a box of stuff, take it. And they go, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. That's not mine. I say, yes, it is now, it's yours. No, no, somebody else is worse off than me. I don't really need that. No, but it would make your life a lot easier if you had it, wouldn't it? Oh, well, yes, it would, but somebody else is worse off than me. So, yeah, that is the opposite. If you were a Buddhist and you had a begging bowl and, and you didn't eat Mars bars and someone put a Mars bar into your begging bowl, you couldn't say, well, that, that can be for somebody else. No, no, it was destined for you and you eat it. You know, it works both ways. Stealing and when you're given something, you have to use it. It's come to you, you have to use it. So think about the armors. They're not just theoretical. Get back to me about them. Look at the yamas, go to, to my Etsy bookstore, www.myyogabooks, all one word, at etsy.com, and download the Etsy book, the, the book there on yamas. It is very comprehensive, easy to understand, and I think that you will enjoy it. It's got some examples, and it's got a wide um, idea about yamas. And it was something, at the time I wrote that, I was studying them with Oxford University, so it's, it's pretty well researched. So I hope you go on watching these videos and get back to me for tomorrow's video, which is Brahmacharya. When I was working with the guys in rehab, Brahmacharya, respecting all things, uh, particularly uh, from a sexual point of view, was a discussion that went on for some hours in every case. Namaste. Have a lovely day.